Lovely problem, right? Um, so what we have here is now a factoring problem. When I want to go to the zeros, that's not going to be so easy. So that's why I thought this would be a great problem to include. Um, first, though, to determine the end behavior, we look at the degree. We determine the degree is odd. And we also look at not our leading coefficient, which is 9, which is positive. So therefore, we know our graph is going to fall left and then rise right. When determining the zeros, I'm not writing any polynomial equation. I'm writing a polynomial function. So now when determining the zeros, we're going to set our f of x equal to 0. All right, and then the next step is now we always want to um, determine our GCF when we're factoring, because we need to solve for x. So we always want to factor this out. And we notice that each one of my values, I can factor out a 3x. So by factoring out a 3x, I now obtain dot, 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 a 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. All right. Now what I need to do is I need to factor the 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. All right. So now to factor this further, I know that my first two, term, first two terms have to be 3x and x. That's going to allow me to get to 3x squared. But then I need to determine what two values are going to multiply to give me negative 1. Well, it has to be a positive 1 and a negative 1. But then they have to add to give me a positive 2x. So that means I know that my 3x has to multiply by a positive 1. And my x has to multiply by a negative 1. Therefore, you can see that's going to be my factored form. Now what I can do is now I can apply the zero product property. Since I'm multiplying each one of these factors that, that give me 0, I can now say that 3x equals 0, or 3x minus 1 equals 0, or x plus 1 equals 0. So now solving for each of my zeros, I get x equals 0. x equals 1 third, and x equals negative 1. So now the next step is we need to determine the multiplicity. Well, we look, go back up to our factors, and we see that each one of these factors only have an exponent of 1. So therefore, the multiplicity of each one of my zeros is going to be 1 or odd um, for this problem. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you determine the multiplicity of zeros and then behavior. Thanks.